So if you are a fingerstyle blues guitar player, you may be looking for ways to add new ideas and more interesting licks to your vocabulary. And you may specifically be thinking that it would be cool if you could add some jazzier flavor to your usual supply of blues licks. Now in a previous recent lesson, I talked about how to do this with chords, how to swap in sixth and ninth chord voicings for the usual dominant seventh chords that you use on a blues and E. In this lesson, we're gonna look at it from a soloing point of view. I wanna show you how just adding in the notes the sixth and the ninth to the usual blues licks can really change the sound and really open things up and make things sound really slick and really cool. Okay, so the idea is if you're playing steady bass blues and E, probably using either E minor pentatonic uh, or the E blues scale, and all of which works great. Um, you might even be including the major third, hammering on to the major third here on the third string, or sliding up to it. But if you're not using the sixth and the ninth, you're not getting sort of the fuller flavor that you can get out of the situation. It sounds great for blues and even the most um, sort of thoroughly gra jazz grounded musicians um, still use just the straight blues scale all the time. Uh, I'm not saying that you don't want to have like that fluency and that sound in your vocabulary, but if you want to open things up and have something to contrast with the blues sound, then adding in the sixth and the ninth is a great thing to try out. So what I'm talking about is, as you go up the scale, here's the root, here's the flat third, here's the fourth, here's the fifth. The sixth is a whole step above the fifth. And then from there we got the flat seven, and here's the root. And then we got the ninth, which is a whole step above the root. And so yeah, the ninth is the same thing as the second, but when you hear it in the upper octave above the seventh, Musicians tend to refer to that as the ninth, even though it is the second note of the scale, because they're thinking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's nine notes up from the root, especially when you're thinking about it in that register. And you may be looking at them going, well, no kidding. Like if I play the major third and I add in the sixth and I add in the ninth, those are basically the notes of the major pentatonic scale. And you'd be right but thinking of them as notes to add into the blues scale may help you think of it as one complete sound and as a way to add in these brighter, more major sounding notes to your existing blues licks rather than thinking of the major pentatonic as a completely different color that you just have to like consciously pick up and go to and that it's, it isn't necessarily integrated into your blues sound. So. If we just take some simple blues licks. If we start to include the ninth and the sixth, as well as the major third, we can immediately change things from uh, the sort of funkier, darker sound of the blues scale into the brighter sound of these major notes. So even just having the major third in there and having that sixth in there to climb up to from the fifth to the sixth to the flat seven to the root. And then resolving back to the major third. And being able to go from the flat seven through the root up to the ninth, as opposed to the flat third, right? So having these notes gives you 
more territory to cover and it also opens it up into a more scale wise kind of sound instead of just the blues licks and finally those notes also just give you these really nice colors to land on <laughs> So just adding in those couple of notes, if you really lean on them, you can, if you just use the six as a replacement for seven, it immediately brightens things up. If you use flat three as a replace, use major third as a replacement for flat three, then you immediately get this vocabulary that's much brighter. And then when you go to say the four chord, you can drop back into the sound of the blues and now you're going to be not only creating some contrast with those major notes but also really helping to target notes of the four chord like the flat seven so So that's the idea. If you've got a question or comment about today's lesson, please leave it for me down below. I would love to hear from you. And if you're a fingerstyle blues guitar player looking for a more organized, ongoing way to develop your repertoire, strengthen your right hand groove, and start to improvise, I encourage you to check out my membership, Fingerstyle 5, which you can learn more about at the link below or the link on screen. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.